Number 65. When two soap bubbles touch, the larger is inflated by the smaller until they form a single bubble. Letter A. What is the gauge pressure inside a soap bubble with a 1.5 centimeter radius? All right, so um, here's the bubble. And we know that um, in order to find the pressure inside of a bubble uh, as such, we need to know this particular formula that the pressure will be equal to four multiplied by the surface tension of the liquid, or excuse me, of the fluid, right? Uh, which is represented as gamma here, divided them by the radius of the spherical bubble. Remember this formula is specific to spherical objects and bubbles form spheres. So uh, in order to calculate the gauge pressure within this bubble, it's fairly straightforward. We need to know what type of a fluid it is or uh, and it told us that it's soapy, right? It's a it's a soap bubble here. So I have over here the surface tension of a of soapy water. And I need to know the radius, which they told me, so I can just plug everything in, right? So we'll call this the pressure inside bubble number one, okay? It's gonna be four multiplied by that surface tension of 0 0.0370, all divided then by the radius. I'm gonna convert this into uh, meters, right? So we can get Pascal. Um, uh, so just move the decimal two places to the left, so 0 0.0150, and here we go. Just throw it on into the calculator, 4 times 0 0.037 divided by 0 0.015, and we get 9.87 or so, considering rounding, 9.87, and that's in Pascals. Okay, letter A is done. Let's take a look at now letter B. Um, whoops, what happened there? Letter B. Uh, inside, so we got to find the gauge pressure inside now a four centimeter radius soap bubble. So again, same principle here. Uh, here's bubble number two, four centimeters. And I'm going to call this P sub two now. Would equal now uh, four times the surface tension of that soapy water divided by then the radius. All right, let me put a little subscript of two down here as well. Also going back to here, I'll just put a little subscript of one. And now all we have to do is just plug everything in, right? So there's going to be 4 multiplied by that surface tension of 0 0.0370, all divided then by the radius now. I'm going to convert that into meters again. And here we go. Plug it on in. So it's going to be 4 times 0 0.037 divided now by 0 0.04. And we have a value of now 3.7. 3.7. All right. And I guess we'll add another 0 to that for sig figs, whatever. Um, we, and here's Pascal. All right. Now, letter C. Let's take a look. So now it says, uh, what's the gauge pressure basically inside the single bubble they form if no air is lost when they touch? So basically what's gonna happen over here is that these two bubbles are gonna come in contact with one another and they're going to merge right into a single bubble. I'm sure you've seen this if you've ever played with bubbles. Now, uh, we have to understand, so in order to find the pressure now inside of this combined bubble, right, we, we're gonna use the same formula. Okay, it's still going to be that the pressure inside of now, I'll call it the total bubble, okay, which would be formed when these two combine, would be equal to then 4 multiplied by the surface tension of the fluid, which is still soapy water. So that hasn't changed. Divided though by now the radius, the total radius of this new bubble. This is what we need to investigate in order to find this. So now that being the case, we have to think about it. And if we're considering how these two will add together, it said that no air is lost, right? Now, remember, these are spheres. It's drawn on a two-dimensional paper, but remember, it's really three-dimensional. And therefore, this has a certain volume. I'll call that V1. And this also will have a certain volume. I'll call that V2. So if no air is lost when they both combine, wouldn't that just simply be that the total volume of this thing will be V1 plus V2, right? If no air is lost, that should make sense. Now, if this is the case, then we can start elaborating on this formula. So let me just move this up a little bit. So we know that the since this is a sphere, this will probably have to be memorized. You should know the volume of a sphere here to be 4 thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to expand on each of these volumes and include the 4 thirds pi r cubed for each. So just watch the only subscripts that will change will be that of the radius. So 4 thirds pi times the total radius now cubed will equal 4 thirds divided by, uh, excuse me, 4 thirds times pi times the radius of 1 cubed plus then 4 thirds times pi times the radius of bubble number 2 cubed. Now, as we know from 
basic mathematics, right? These three, these four thirds pi cancel since they're in common amongst every term. And what we realize is that we come down to this formula, right? Where we have the total radius cubed will be equal to then the radius of one cubed plus now the radius of two cubed. If I wanna find just the radius of the total bubble that's formed, I can simply now take the cube root of, of both sides, right? Of the left side and the right side. So in doing that now, we come up with this beautiful formula that the total radius or the radius of the bubble when the two soap bubbles are combined uh, will then equal the cube root of r1 cubed plus r2 cubed. And voila, here is now what, this is how we can now, this is, what am I trying to say? I'm not really sure. This is what we can now substitute, right, on in for the total radius here, because we do know the radius of the first bubble, they told it to us. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use the meters though, all right? And the radius of the second bubble, we also know that too. So now finally we know everything we need to know for this equation. I'm just going to substitute the terms on in. So this is four multiplied by the surface tension, all divided now by the cube root of R1 cubed plus R2 cubed. And now we can plug in the values, right? So this is four multiplied by the surface tension over here, uh, 0 0.0370. Remember that has not changed, it's still soapy water. Then divided now by the cube root of zero. So again, converting that into uh, meters, 0 0.015 cubed plus I'm just going to write it underneath since I don't have a lot of space remember all of this is under the cube root uh, plus 0 0.04 cubed all right now just plug it on into that calculator right so four times point uh, zero three seven get an answer and then now divide that by the cube root of 0 0.015 cubed plus 0 0.04 cubed and then what do we get here? We get a value of about 3.64 or so, right? Considering rounding. So the answer is gonna come out to be 3.64, 3.64. And what do we have here? This is in terms of, again, Pascals. All right, so that should be the answer. I mean, you can take that unit and convert it however you like, millimeters of mercury, whatever you wanna do. And, uh, but this is, these, these would be values, all right? Well, obviously. Now, guys, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Hope this helped. Please remember to subscribe, give us a hand, and we'll see you next time. Take care.